Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I wanted to show a, a couple of signals for trading on Friday that we came into. I want to recap uh, using market profile and volume profile a little bit, how the day set up on Friday and why I took the trades that I did. A couple of little small scalper trades. Don't usually trade on Friday, but uh, a couple things set up. You got to go with your gut. So. Uh, let's see, Monday and Tuesday, these two market profiles will show that uh, we did have, you know, price acceptance. We had nice, somewhat balanced profiles down here. Uh, we had earnings on Tuesday and Wednesday, which drove us out of this trading range up into newer ranges towards the high of the week. Uh, this red line here where my cursor is uh, was a weekly high of January um, uh, 18th. Uh, week so we busted over the weekly high of that week so, uh, I think this was actually an outside week uh, bear a bullish engulfing week if I remember correctly I think we got below the lows I have to look at that but uh, no matter at this point um, now on uh, Thursday we had price acceptance up in this area after the uh, short covering uh, or the um, earnings that drove us up here the overnight session identified uh, by the 6 p.m. to 9.30, 6 p.m. the day before, 9.30 a.m. the day of trading. This is what I call the overnight range, um, signified by the orange type market profile. This purplish area is the 70% value area. That's where time is spent trading 70% of the time. And you can see that the overnight session accepted the prices that were driven up to by all the great earnings between Apple and Facebook on Wednesday and Thursday and, of course, others. So we're trading up in this range. We're opening the day. Um, as you can see, the price action, um, if I can just zoom in here a little bit, it be a little bit hard to see. but. We ended up opening the, the 9.30 Friday session at this yellow A, which is right in the middle of the overnight session profile. And more importantly, is actually inside the range of the prior day and actually inside this purplish area, which is the what, what, we, what we call the value area, where 70% of the time uh, was spent. So we got two trend days in a row. Friday tends to be a little bit sleepier of a day. Uh, not a lot of earnings action. Uh, there was some news releases, I believe. I think non-farm payrolls was at 8.30, and we had some other news out at 10 uh, that uh, drove some price action. But inevitably, in a range day, we expect to find a high and a low and to be trading within that range, which is why we call it a range day. So I'm going to move from that, given my expectation where we're opening and the kind of activity that I expect. I'm thinking trading range day if I'm trading at all. So we've got to find a high and you know potentially find a low, and it's not uncommon. These are typically you know either within the value area of the day before in the regular time hours, or if the overnight high or low sets you know uh, good boundary areas, we'll be trading you know at or above those a little bit, or at or below those a little bit. Uh, for setting our boundary conditions for the trading. And I go to my two-minute chart. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is typically if I'm anticipating a range day, I'm often going to be trading on a lower time frame chart. So I might trade a five-minute on a trend day. On a range day, I'm certainly looking to take a few more signals for smaller trades, uh, three-minute, two-minute, maybe even one-minute chart. In this case, I'll show a two-minute and give you some idea of <coughs> excuse me, trades I'm going to take and why I'm going to take them. So if I look at the price action coming into the day, uh, I'm going to just maximize this. Okay, so 9.30 hours are open. That was that uh, yellow A23 or 27.05 area. We opened, we tested a little bit above it, we tested a little bit below it. We haven't broken the overnight low, which is this one. And the overnight high is, you know, way up in here somewhere. And you can see where yesterday's high and yesterday's close uh, were by these green and cyan colors. Um, but we ended up chopping around a little bit in this range. We opened into the day with a little bit of an impulse um, before the market opened. We chopped. We got down. We got up. And we had this impulse move. News came out at 10. I don't recall what it was. Uh, it might have been a PMI number. It might have been... 
some other type of data, housing data or something, but something did come out and the market actually made a move uh, response to that. And you can see these two big candles drove us up <clears throat> and on the ticks, which is the uh, symbol, uh, the symbol I use is NICE tick, which is dollar sign tick in thinkorswim. You can see that the this candle here, where you can see that green triangle made a new tick high of the day and it corresponds to this big bullish price action. But notice what happens, and this is something to look for and another clue that a range day or some pullback might be happening, is you can look at price action is actually starting to make new highs. However, the tick, if you look at it, is starting to diverge. So we're actually making higher highs in price and starting to make lower highs in tick, which is indicative of selling going on. Um, call it smart money or whoever's money you want at that point. But you know, to me, this is an indication to be wary about taking long trades, which is why I did not take these signals here. As you can see, we did break over the prior day's high, which is this green line, and we did just barely eclipse that and then started finding sellers. Not uncommon, right? So we had sellers the day before, which is what set the high of the day before at this green line. We tested into it a little bit above it. Maybe you're going to get people getting trapped getting too long at this point on what might be a range day. And sure enough, we ended up pulling back. We had a couple of good sell-off candles on you know, pretty decent volume here, uh, increasing volume on these two sales. We chopped around a little bit and then found a lot more selling. We got a lot more uh, liquidation activity that you know was trickling right around yesterday's high and then boom, it sold off. So I'm really starting to say, okay, the, the range day seems somewhat valid. We did end up move back in price. Um, we did get a breakout signal in this area with a flat cloud. Um, I didn't take it because I felt like we might end up finding sellers again. And sure enough, we just uh, tiptoed over the high of the other, uh, the prior day and then found sellers once again. So what's going on now? So if I look at this activity, you're starting to see the resemblance of a triangle consolidation pattern, right? Get that to work. So you can see we're starting to make, you know, our way in and through this and you're starting to look for breaks outside of this trading range and you'll see down in this area we started getting them. So what am I thinking? So the other end of the range day trading would be down to this low area or maybe even this low area. Not uncommon for the low of the overnight session down here at uh, 2696.25 might be a target which is the other end of the range uh, if the high is set at 27.16 and the low down here you're kind of trading in this area you feel pretty safe or at least I do looking at roughly maybe 10 more points to go from here down to the overnight low as a target and that's kind of the thing that tends to happen on a range day it doesn't always happen and certainly anything can happen in price action but you know if I'm going to be taking trading and I'm thinking I'm in a range day I'm getting a consolidation area I'm starting to break out of the triangle to the low side. I'm starting to think we're getting to the other end of the triangle. And sure enough, we get a, a black box breakout signal here. Uh, very close to you know hitting the stop. The trade signal fired here, which painted the red stop line and the green entry line. And as you can see, we came very close to stopping out on this trade and then found significant liquidation uh, and ended up getting in the trade. Let's say you take a couple of contracts. So you're in the trade for a couple of contracts. You take one off at the 100% line. You move the other one to break even. Then you can't lose on the day, and you could you know, potentially go home with a little bit of money. So I call on Fridays my beer money. Um, we ended up getting a little bit of a pullback, and then boom, we're right down here. So where is this low? This low is a little bit below that low I talked about earlier, right? So you got a nice target being met that you have just taken out the low of the regular trading hours session that was around 10 and it was the base of where this big impulse move upward went so you just took that out by you know maybe a point or so uh, looks like about a point we took that out each one of these is a point so uh, we've gone from here down to here another place to take off maybe your other contract or um, you know, look at another trade. So you take your contract off here, you're flat, 
you come up, you test the cloud, you get another breakout signal, right? So your stop's just barely above the cloud at the entry of this black box breakout signal. You tiptoe trigger in here, you get up, you don't even come above this area, and boom, you're right back down again. Where does this low end up coming out? Uh, you know, this was another 100% trade. This low eclipsed the low of the day that I talked about before, the 26.96.25 range. I am not thinking any that this thing is going to be going any further from there. If I hit that level, I'm taking my trade off no matter what. Now it could continue to liquidate down, but the reality is it's uh, at 1,500 hours. That's at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's possible that we're going to have an impulse down, but it's not likely because all of the trading in the entire day and most of the day before has occurred above this price level. So for me, I'm thinking I'm getting out of this trade no matter what. I don't care what's going on. Uh, it is not likely in my mind, given that value is now a trading value where people feel prices have been fair for almost 24 hours in trading. Um, I feel like it's going to be a, a fair price to go below that. So I close my trade, I'm out, and sure enough, we start finding buyers. It takes a little while to turn the ship around, but once we do, we start getting working back up into the um, you know value area that we've been setting up with about 24 hours worth of trading. So in a nutshell, that's trading on a range day and using some other things like tick activity and looking at for divergences and having ideas of where your high and low range is for targets that you're going to be setting for taking your trades on and off. Hope that helps guys. Take care. Have good trading next week. Bye-bye.